In this lesson, I'm going to talk about operations with limits. So these are very important for what we're going to do later on. And also, uh, this is kind of the framework uh, for evaluating limits. Okay. So just to start off uh, before I discuss each one of these, um, we're going to let B and C be real numbers. So that R that you see there, that just stands for the set of real numbers. Okay. So B and C belong to the set of real numbers. And let N belong to Q. Q is just a mathematical uh, description of the set of rational numbers. Okay, so uh, rational number, for example, is basically uh, like one half, uh, negative three fourths, uh, even two. If you have the value of two, you can write it as two over one. So that's considered to be a rational number. Okay, so uh, we're going to define f and g to be functions such that the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to uh, some value, let's call it l, and let the limit of g of x as x approaches c equal to another value. And let's call that k. All right, so l and k are basically uh, just um, numbers here, okay? And both limits are, are have finite values, okay? So the first property that you see here is the scalar property, okay? So if we have the limit of B, okay, remember B is just a number here, times the function, we can actually take the constant out, okay? So we can take the constant outside the limit. And so then we know by definition the limit of F is L. Okay, so this, this is just gonna become B times L, okay? So that's the scalar property, meaning that you can take the scalar outside of the limit, okay? And let me do an example, okay? Um, let's say we have the limit as x approaches, um, let's use, let's use a trig function. So let's say I have uh, four times sine of x, okay? So we can take the four out using this scalar property. Okay. All right, and so then we take the limit of sine x as x approaches pi over two. So in this case, uh, we just need to evaluate the function, in this case sine, at pi over two. Okay, and so we get four times sine of pi over two. And sine of pi over two is one, therefore this is gonna give us four, okay? All right, so that's the first property, okay? The second property is the sum and difference. So basically all this says is that if we have the limit of f of x plus or minus g of x, we can split up the limits, okay? All right, so we can split them up. So in other words, we have the limit of f as x approaches c plus or minus the limit of g as x approaches c, okay? So you can apply this to either the addition or subtraction, okay? So since the limit, okay, we're assuming that the limit of whatever function we're working with is approaching l, okay? So this is going to give us, okay? So this is gonna give us l and this will give us k. All right, and so then we just have L plus or minus K. Okay, so an example of this would be something like, let's say we have, um, let's say X approaches, well, let's say pi in this case. And let's say that I have, say sine X plus cosine x, okay? All right, and so we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches pi of sine x plus the limit as x approaches pi of cosine x, okay? All right, so the limit of sine x as x approaches pi, okay? Uh, that's just going to be sine pi, uh, which is zero. And the limit 
of cosine x as x approaches pi, so that's going to give us uh, cosine pi. Okay, cosine pi is negative 1, so we're going to have 0 minus 1, so this is minus 1 then. Okay, so that's how that property works. Okay, um, also something to keep in mind here, you, you can do, if we have more than, uh, we can have more than two functions basically here. Okay, um, if you have like, however many you have, you could have f, g, h, k, whatever, uh, however many, and so you can still apply, you can split up the limit, okay, depending on how many functions you have, okay, so this can be extended uh, for more than two functions as well, okay. Uh, the third property is the product. So this works in a much similar way as number two, um, in, the, in such a way so, so that you could split up the limit, okay, so we have the limit as x approaches c of f of x times g of x. So you can split this up as the limit of f of x as x approaches c times the limit of g of x as x approaches c. So in this case, this is going to give us, okay, right, this is L and this is k. So that means we have L times k. Alright. So an example of this is going to be, let's say we have the limit as, uh, let's use, mm, uh, let's just use uh, 1, okay, and have, uh, we have, let's say, mm, let's say x squared times e to the x, okay, so then Okay, using the product rule for limits, we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared times the limit as x approaches 1 of e to the x. Okay. All right, so the limit of x squared as x approaches 1, so we just sub substitute 1 to there, okay, and that gives us a value of 1. And the limit of e to the x as x approaches 1 is just going to be e to the first power, so we just get e here. And so then we multiply those, so 1 times e will give us e. Okay. Alright. The fourth one is the, uh, is the quotient rule for limits. Okay. So, much like the product rule, we can split it up. Okay, the only difference here is that we're using the quotient, okay, instead of the product, okay. All right, so we have the limit of f over g as x approaches c, so we can take and separate those. So we have the limit of f as x approaches c divided by the limit of g as x approaches c. Okay, so this is going to be L over k. Okay, so this will exist provided that uh, k is not equal to 0. Okay, all right. So an example of this, let's say we have the limit as x approaches, um, let's see, let's use, I'll use pi this time, or let's say I use, mm, uh, let's see, I can use, ah, doesn't matter, let's use 2, okay. So we have, let's say, e to the uh, x, Okay, all divided by, let's say, x plus 1. Okay, so this is going to be the same as taking the limit as x approaches 2. Okay, e to the x, all divided by the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 1. Okay, so the top part, the numerator, for the limit we get e to the power 2, the bottom, okay, uh, we have the limit of x plus 1 as x approaches 2, so that's going to be 3. So this is the same thing as saying 1 third e to the power 2. Okay. All right, the f uh, okay, so that's the quotient property. Uh, the fifth property is the power, the power rule for limits, okay. So, 
what this says is that, okay, we have the limit of the function and then surrounding that, and then this function is being raised to the nth power. And so that's the same, okay, if we take the limit of the function first as x approaches c and then raising it to uh, some power n here, okay? All right, so in this case, uh, we would end up getting, okay, we would take the limit of f as x approaches c and then raising, that would be l, and then raise this to the power n, okay? Okay, so an example of this, let's say, uh, let's say we take the limit as x approaches 4 of, let's say, x squared, let's say x squared minus 1 to the uh, third power, okay? All right, so then what we can do, okay? Uh, we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches four, okay? So we can take the limit of this first and then raise it to the power. Okay, so inside, inside the brackets, okay, uh, we're going to get uh, 15, okay, so the limit of x squared minus 1 as x approaches 4, okay, that is going to give us 15, okay, and then we can raise it to the third power. Okay, and so that's going to give us uh, 3,375. Okay, all right, so these are the five uh, basic operations with limits, okay? So we have the scalar, where you can take out the scalar first and then take the limit. Um, the second one was the sum or difference. You can distribute the limit over the addition or subtraction. The third one was the product. You can, again, there you can distribute the limit over the product. The fourth one was the quotient. You can distribute the limit over the quotient of two functions, okay? And the power rule, okay, for limits. So you take, if you have a limit of a function rate being raised to the some power, you take the limit of that function first and then raise it to the, uh, to the uh, power that's given, okay? All right, so these are the five basic operations with, uh, with limits.